Hi, this is Danny Doyle, and I'm back with a follow-up to what was probably my most popular video. Um, it's definitely the one that's had the most views and the most, like, feedback on it. Uh, and that was, a while ago, myself and Mithril Zenith made a bad unit tier list, where we talked about some of the worst units who have ever been existent in Fire Emblem, as well as some of the people with the worst reputations in terms of Fire Emblem, moved them around uh, on their tiers and whatnot, and uh, ranked them in terms of how bad they are or not bad they are. Uh, it was really, really fun to do. However, uh, as I alluded to, I have gotten a lot of uh, comments about it, a lot of feedback. Sometimes people agreeing, sometimes people disagreeing. Um, and I, as a result of that, as well as just replaying some of these games, because I'm hopelessly addicted to Fire Emblem, so I replay the games pretty frequently, um, my thoughts on quite a few of these units have changed, um, and I wanted to do a follow-up, uh, both to move people who I think are kind of in egregiously bad spots, uh, or to respond to people's comments either in saying, yeah, you're right, I should move this person, or no, I don't, uh, I don't think that's the case, and sort of elaborate on why I feel that they are kind of in the place where they should be. Um, and of course, since I am following up on a video that I initially had Mirtho Zenith on, I figured that it would only be appropriate to invite him back and see if his opinions have changed at all as well. So, uh, Zenith, do you want to tell everyone who you are, what you do, all that fun stuff? Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Mithril Zenith. I do a YouTube channel where I've been talking more about some game design stuff, uh, generally focused on Fire Emblem, uh, though I've been not necessarily as beholden to or addicted to Fire Emblem as some other channels uh, hereby. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but if you want to hear uh, me talk with Danny about uh, some of the worst maps in the series, because I've been talking about maps a lot, apparently, that's what I do, uh, I would recommend to go check that out. I should have this uploaded uh, around the same time as this video is, if not before, so link should be in the description below. Yes, uh, and I would definitely recommend checking out his channel because there's some cool stuff there. Um, some of it's Fire Emblem, some of it is like strategy games, like uh, real-time strategy games, and some of it is like uh, sometimes you just grind old-school RuneScape. <laughs> so, variety of content. Um, whatever floats your goat, uh, you're probably going to find some of it there. Before we dive into specifically the, because I got a list of units that I wanted to talk about, and I think Zenith does as well, although his might be shorter than mine. Just a, um, few. Just a few. Just a few. I did want to do two points of housekeeping. Um, the first is, the most common comment that I get is about why isn't XYZ unit on this list? Um, and this was never intended to be a complete list of every single bad unit in Fire Emblem. Um, we talked for four hours just about these people. I had to split it into two videos. Uh, I think adding every single bad unit would, one, make the video unwatchably long, and two, it would get really repetitive. Like, there's only so many times you can say, Midland Cavalier from Arcanea games, like, you know, Roche Violent, or Trek, uh, not Arcanea, but, like, it's a similar boat in terms of that. Or, like, hey, this unit has four movement, um, and they're bad because of that. Like, a lot of units who are bad, who didn't end up on this list, are bad in ways that are similar to other people who did end up on this list, you know? We talked about uh, a couple of, like, outclassed FE1 Cavaliers. Um, if we talked about the outclassed FE11 Cavaliers, like, there's some slight minutia, but at the end of the day, it is similar enough that I didn't want to repeat over and over, like, yeah, they've got the Lance rank for Horse Slayer, so, like, you can do stuff with them, but they're just strongly outclassed. Yeah, you could train this person, but they're just too low level for the time they join. Um, so if your favorite or most hated unit is absent from the list, it wasn't anything, like, intentional in terms of, uh, I actually think they're bad. Uh, most of the people who get brought up, I'm like, yeah, they are actually bad. However, they're bad in a boring way. Um, or they're bad in a way that's too close to someone we talked about. Like, we talked about FE12 Bantu. FE11 Bantu is not as bad, but he's bad in very similar ways, so it would have just been repetitive. Um, so if, if I left someone off, it's not because we think that there's some sort of secret tech. It's mostly just because we didn't think that'd be interesting to talk about. Um, and four hours is a long time, especially because, like, 
the four hour video you got is not just four hours of effort. Like I had to edit stuff down. There was plenty of talking that got left off. There's plenty of cutting room floor things. Um, so that's that. Uh, second, the big elephant in the room, um, the most common, uh, thing that people said about Robert is we used the wrong face. So I'm sorry about that. Um, it, it's, it's really, I guess, indicative of, and ties into the point of, like, the units we left off are bad and boring ways. Like, there are four training projects you get around the same time in Thracia, and all of them are incredibly disappointing in ways that are similar to each other. Like, Robert is probably the worst because he shows up late and is stuck on bows. Um, but all of them are, like, you can salvage them with scrolls, uh, if you want to. And then, like, Kalion shows up earliest, so he's technically the best of them. But they're, they're so similar to each other that, like, I guess but accident I accidentally addressed the you left X unit off criticism by putting on a unit <laughs> and mistaking him for someone else and demonstrating that they are so boringly similar to each other um, <laughs> that they might as well be the same entry. Um, so I'm sorry to any Robert fans or Kane and Alpha fans or Carrion fans. I don't remember whose portrait we put up. Um, I'm sorry that I got your units mixed up with each other. Um, it was not intentional. I do think it was very funny. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, they, they, I love scrunkly little bad fire moon units. And, like, they are still fun to use if you enjoy it. Like, all power to you. I didn't mean to add extra insult to Andrea by being, like, worst of the worst so much that I won't even give him a fucking portrait. Um, I can add some extra insult to Andrea <laughs> if you want. No, no. I, it needs to be lighthearted. Like, at the end of the day, I don't think that using bad units or being a bad unit is, like, a crime. Um, I should also point out, these tiers are not ordered. I did get a couple of comments about, like, how is, uh, you know, like, how is Walt, or how is Rolf worse than, uh, Gwendolyn? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, these these are not ordered tiers. Uh, I didn't order within the tiers. Like, the tiers are ordered, but the, the thing within it is not. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's that. Uh, did you want to start, or should I start with someone? Um, I think you should start with someone. You have more people on your list, and I need a little more time to decide if any of these other scrubs are worth talking more about. I'll start with Vika, because Vika is a unit that I, uh, we went back and forth about Vika, right? I, I wanted to put her in here. As a little, like, meme at the end of it, I did move her down in, like, an edit after you were gone. Uh, because I thought that'd be a funny way to close the video out. Um, I you think finally turn towards the light. I severely overestimated Vika's utility. Um, I recently replayed Radiant Dawn, and by recently I mean like four months ago. Um, but it was in between now and when we made the list. Um, and I still think she's like greatly outclassed some utility at worst. Um, but she's not doing combat in the fucking swamp map. Like what she's doing is shoving Tormod. Uh, and then when she transforms, she can rescue the green units, but untransformed, she can't. Um, she's incredibly depressing as a unit. Um, yeah. it, it's funny, though, because uh, she can, like, survive a round of combat with some enemies in th her rejoin map. Uh, and she can do some flight stuff in endgame, too, like, with the ledges and whatnot. But it's all, like, incredibly niche utility. Like, it saves her from being fun meme tier, because there's much, like, with some of these other units who it's like, ah, they suck, but, like... Technically, they're doing something. Um, I think that this is probably the best place for her. Um, she's definitely not still fine, TBH. Like, there's nothing fine about her. <laughs> there's nothing yeah, fine about her. Vika is... The most use I've ever gotten out of Vika is Flying Shovebot, which, to be fair, is a fairly unique trait only shared between her, Janef, Olki, and, you know, whatever other Flying Lagoos you have. But... I think the Royals... Yeah, uh, but Flying Shove Bot is kind of a niche within a niche. It is important for getting uh, Tormod to kill that Wyvern on turn one, which like is a big enough deal mm -hmm. that I would say she solidly contributes in that map. Yeah. Um, and then, like, you know, rescuing green villagers when you're transformed, like, sure, it's something she can do. Like, you grass up, you can get it by, like, turn three or whatever. Um, and that's enough to save them if, for whatever reason, you, like, still have... Uh, you know, uh, wyverns coming at them or whatever. Because uh, yeah. they are game over conditions. Well, not all of them, but, like, you need to save at least one. 
all of them yeah, dying as it came over. So, like, it is helpful, but it's it, it really is, like, you're finding a use for the unit. Well, you're not quite finding a use for unit, but you're, like, it's close, right? Like, it's not good. It's not... It, she never belonged in still fine TBH. Like, the mm -hmm. fact that I argued for her to be in not actually bad is deeply embarrassing to me. And, like, it just shows how long it had been since I'd played Radiant Dawn at the time we made that list. Well, that's fine. I think everyone can get some weird opinions uh, when they've been sitting on them for too long and not really... Uh, exploring them because mm -hmm. I think that with Vika you're definitely not choosing to deploy her you're using her because she's been deployed for you yeah um, which is not necessarily the worst curse a unit can have I mean I think the worst curse a unit can have is that you never get to deploy them and you're they're never forced deployed in the first place and mm -hmm. they're bad yeah uh, see like half the cast of new mystery mm-hmm I'm going to show up in preps and you'll forget that I'm there. <laughs> yeah, especially when they get shunted to the bottom of the deployment order. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of goes a, a little bit along the lines of why only these units and not all the units. Uh, consider these, I know how much you love archetypes. Consider these the archetypes of the worst units in the game, in the series. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe that's going a bit too far. Um. So is there someone who you want to talk about next? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Alencia, because I'm wondering if she was one of the units that was moved out of fun meme tier specifically to make fun meme tier a single line. Probably. I think the argument was that, like, she does have flying stab, so it is technically some utility, but I think we're both kind of on the page that, like, staff utility in FE9 is, um... Yeah, it, it's... So, the utility she has is she flies, uh, she has staves, she has one of the coolest personal weapons, and that's a personal brave weapon that boosts her defenses, mm -hmm. um, and she participates in a triangle attack. Oh, I forgot about that. I, literally, two, two of the units in that triangle attack are like the top five units in Fire Emblem mm -hmm. 9, and I forgot that it exists, and that's how bad she is. Oh, yeah, holy it's shit. It's Marcia, Tanith, and Alincia, and you have a whole base conversation about it if they're all alive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's fun, but she is not good. I no. think her staff rank actually starts at like D or something. No, maybe it's C. Either way, you get her in Clash, and you'll use her for Staff Utility in Clash. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you're not wanting to bring her into any map because she's a game over condition. And if you do bring her, then what? You're going to be using her for Flying Staff Utility in an indoor castle map? Probably not. Uh, it, it just... She's a fun meme. Amity memes. Amity Triangle Attack memes. Uh... But, but she's not actually really providing you much useful utility. Even in 0% growths, where she was, like, the best staffer by far because she had the most magic and had flight in Kanto, I wasn't thrilled to use her. And, like, in 0 growth, staff utility actually matters because you want to heal your units because they're a lot weaker than they would be without growths. Um, but I was not thrilled to use her. I think we touched on this in the previous video, but it is really tragic that in the one map where Flight Plus Rescue would be, like, a uniquely good thing. Twisted Tower. She's just literally not allowed to play uh, for a poorly justified story reason. Um, like, she's just doing something on another battlefield, and it's just, like, it's not even really explained. Like, oh, yeah, we're just doing two fights at the same time, and, like, she has to be in this one. Why? I thought it Why? Was... <laughs> like, it's so I, stupid. I thought the explanation was a, a little bit of, like the like, like, the gendered explanation of, like, Oh yeah, no, we shouldn't bring the princess here. What's happening here is too awful for her to witness. Oh, maybe? I don't remember. Either way, I, I remember that, it, like, not holding up to scrutiny, in my opinion. Yeah, I know that they do that during the map, where they turn away whoever it is elsewise at the end, when it's like, hey, we're not even going to show on camera what is being done here because it's such an atrocity. I know that happens with Orson, uh, with Monica, where, like, in order to avoid showing you Monica, uh, Ephraim is like, take Erica away from here. It's, it's, you know, her eyes are too pure or whatever, right? I could be confusing that, but I know that it happens as well because you go into the dungeon and they're like, I'm gonna be sick. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave. Like, Ike is like, I'm gonna be sick. I'm oh! Gonna be sick. Oh! That's, um, so that's Solo. 
That's Solo, the- when they find the prison cell that Raisin's older sister was in before she died. Um, oh, was it that? Yeah. Long? I'm confusing all the Lagoo's prison cells, apparently. It's okay, like, there's a lot of them. Either way, Elincia is a fun meme, but not a- not really worth her utility. Yeah, I think- I think she either- like, there's one of two explanations for why she was in Greatly Outclassed. I think you probably hit the nail on the head in that she was in Fun Meme and we moved her down for formatting reasons. Um, but it's possible that, like, I was a little bit Zero Growths pilled at that time. It had been, like, two years since I did my Zero Growths playthrough, so probably not. But that's the only other explanation I can think of. So, like, maybe I pushed for her to be some utility. Um, because neither of us think Staff Utility in FE9 is especially good. I think I'm even lower yeah. in it than you are. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, it's like, how she ended up here feels... It was probably the formatting. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I use Mist mostly so I can have an Ike vs. Black Knight fight that isn't reliant on RNG. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why I train Mist. I use Mist because I like her, um, and I use Risk because I like him. Like, I, I, when I say that a unit is bad, um, it doesn't mean I don't use them. Like, it's one of the- I got a comment, uh, when I was streaming the other day where someone was like, you know, so many Effie tubers claim Ross is worse than Garcia, but everyone uses Ross and doesn't use Garcia, and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't mean that yeah, we're Ross not valid. Like, Ross is more fun. Garcia is generically good, uh, but Ross is significantly more fun because the zero to hero is its own reward, and that's part of the, like- the thing about trainees is, uh, oftentimes, like, it is disappointing when the training project turns out worse than the pre-promote, right? However, it's not necessarily a design flaw because often the training project is the reward for training them, right? Like, it is about the journey, not the destination. Um, that's not super related to Alincia because, like, she's not even really a training project. Because <laughs> um, she no. shows up ready to do whatever you want her to, but also nothing. <laughs> She's an endgame bonus experience dump if you really have no one else you want to power a level. You would think so, but like one of my friends uh, recently did a playthrough of FE9 in uh, my Discord, Boards Appreciation Station, which is linked below, uh, and she was streaming it and she got Alincia to 20 with bonus experience, and then she Not was like, God, this unit is so bad. So, these are her bases, right? I get to train her from this, right? <laughs> uh, like, you you invest the 20 levels of bonus experience in her, and then she feels like an Est. <laughs> but but without the ability to gain experience. It's yeah, so from bad. Like four strength to, like, 10. Mm -hmm. You go from, like, 20 hit points to 30. It, it, it's, it's not good. And the Amity Might is very low as well, so, like, that doesn't even, like, it's so tragic. It's yeah, so Alicia tragic. has a fantastic glow up to Queen class in Radiant Dawn, and everyone remembers Radiant Dawn Amity being 11 might mm -hmm. and off of Queen, you know, tier 3 bases against tier 2 enemies, and it's like amazing. But then you go back to Path of Radiance, it's like, yeah, no, Amity I think is like 8 might. Yeah. It, it It's real bad. It's not good. It's not good. Anyway, we we have some other memes to talk about. Yeah, you mentioned uh, a glow up from Alincia, uh, and so I decided. I think we we've talked about units who I think we overrated. I want to talk about someone I think we underrated. Uh, I got several comments from people who know Fates in particular Conquest uh, a little bit better than I do about Flora, and I think that so Flora is still definitely pretty definitively the worst unit in Conquest. Um, however. Uh, I think that we were too harsh on her for the fact that generics outclass her. Um, we put her in the worst of the worst, which is kind of reserved for units who contribute nothing or actively subtract from your ability to do stuff. Like, that feels really harsh when we literally have a tier called outclassed, right? The argument against her is that she's outclassed by generics. Why was she anywhere other than greatly outclassed some utility? Like, it just feels mean. Um... Yeah, Conquest has a very strong cast, and so being the worst unit in Conquest pretty definitively does not necessarily mean that you are among the worst in Fire Emblem. Like, it's similar to the fact that Three Houses units all ended up around the mm -hmm. not-quite-as-bad-as-each-other thing. I think yeah. that Conquest cast isn't as strong as Three Houses' cast, but it's still quite strong. Uh, and Flora can do some stuff that, like, she's not strictly outclassed by the generics. Like, they have better staff rank than her, um, but she has supports. Um, and supports can help. She can just accurately use status staffs sometimes. Um, it's not much, but it's honest work, and, like, 
it is utility. Like, it is some utility. Being outclassed by generics definitely feels greatly outclassed, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think this is probably more fair to her. Uh, just on the grounds of... She's doing stuff. Like, it literally fits the tier description. Um, yeah. This is not me saying that she... Again, these are not ordered. Like, she's worse than Gunter. Or actually, this is Rev Gunter. Uh, she's definitely worse than Rev Gunter. Um, <laughs> but the tier's not ordered. I just put her in her because it was the next spot. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's where she belongs. I, I know that you don't have as much experience as Conquest as me, and I don't even have nope. as much as, like, the commenters, but do you have any thoughts on that or any objections to that? Um... I literally don't remember when she becomes playable. Uh, That's so my it's, contribution. It's, uh, you have to build towers in my castle, like the turrets for the multiplayer, and then she'll join you as a result of that. Um, so there's like a minimum chapter, because the so minimum chapter forest, for yeah. that, like you have to have a level 3, and it only unlocks by like a specific chapter, but then it's like flexible, and I think she auto-levels, but it like it's not super relevant, her auto-levels. The big mark against her is, like, you can capture generics to do basically everything she does. Um, and I say basically because, like I mentioned, there are supports. Like, there there are technically ways in which she is not strictly outclassed, but for all intents and purposes, she is outclassed. Um, you know, much in the same way that, like, lower than A. Uh, I don't remember the exact one, but at the time she joins, there are capturable maids with higher staff rank and higher stats than her. Um, but she can still do stuff. Uh, and I think that at the end of the day, like, everyone who can still do stuff probably belongs here at the lowest or highest. It's hard to <laughs> fucking... I shouldn't have made them upside down, but... Yeah, I think this is a place yeah. for her. Like, it's literally the description. It's where she goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Speaking what do you got for us? I'm unsure if we're going to be moving location, but I wanted to talk about uh, FE11 Shadow Dragon Marth just because... He still gets so much hate that it's like, honestly, some of it is deserved, but I think most of the hate he gets comes down to the fact that everyone zooms in on Endgame for him. Mm -hmm. Everyone zooms in on Endgame, they say he gets double by Medius and Hard 5, uh, Falchion's worthless, and you have to give up the, the Star Sphere for it. But I think that early game and maybe this this just could be because of the uh the version of shadow dragon i played the content patch uh early game his high luck is actually incredibly valuable in allowing him to bait out enemies and safely kind of tank and chip away at enemies because no other unit outside of maybe Sita has as much luck as marth does to the point where luck is often a very overrated and oh, or sorry underrated and overlooked stat but when you have enough luck that you become effectively immune to criticals you suddenly become the safe option especially if you're like iron manning and it, it's between that and his rapier that is not as good as the wing spear but i think ultimately it's like Marth gets overlooked because there are options that are better, not because anything he brings is inherently bad. And so I'm wondering if I'm pushing towards outclassed but still fine, but I'm still on the fence about that. Uh, what do you think? I think um, that your uh, perception of him might be somewhat swayed by the fact that you did play FCP recently. Um, and the and FCP is Marth FCP prologue is, is basically Marth is your only cr like safe solution. Yeah. He's a training project there. Like he gets a lot of experience pumped into him. Mm -hmm. And as a result, his starting stats in chapter one have him being much more competent. Um, I think that even in the early game, his combat tends to be pretty bad, like 18 mm -hmm. HP and seven defense, even with seven luck, like not getting crit, um, He's still not living that many rounds of combat. Uh, even with Weapon Triangle, like, he's probably getting two rounded, which most of your units are, uh, in fairness. But his frailty is a problem in maps that really want you to be aggressive. Uh, Seven Luck yeah. is definitely better than the rest of the starting cast. Maybe Sita has more than that, I don't remember. Um, but it's not enough that he's immune to crits. Um... Which, like, he'll still sometimes face 1% crits, right? And that's a little bit tragic. Um, 
the one where the one area that I do think like and again I don't know that this moves him but my opinion on Marth has shifted partially because I've re-examined the way that I tier uh, units in general which obviously it's you know very subjective the way the criteria that you use right um, yeah. but I think uh, that Marth should get credit for the villages in FE11 that give you things that you want in a similar vein to GBA thieves getting credit for chests that only they can open or stealables that only they can get. Um, okay. So if you do that, like he gets credit for, I mean, obviously there's the downside of then he does limit him from being able to do combat. Like if he's getting pulled, for example, to get the George village, um, or that's a bad example because it's a recruitable character and that's weird. If he's getting pulled to like get a uh, village that has a valuable item in it, right? Like there's a village that has like a silver weapon, I think at some point early like on. Like Thoron village, yeah. Yeah, Thoron village. Um, if he's getting pulled to get Thoron, right? Then he's getting pulled away from combat and that is definitely a negative. And normally when you look at like I think that the normal perspective, or the, the traditional perspective around tearing him has been similar to the fact that, like, lords having to seize pulls them away from side objectives, and so it's a net negative. Um, Marth having to visit those villages pulls him away from combat that you probably don't want him doing anyway. Uh, like, his combat is poor enough even in the mid-game that, like, getting pulled away from fighting an enemy that can one round you is not actually a negative <laughs> in my opinion That's um fair. and so i think that giving him sort of thief utility quote unquote for mm -hmm. the villages um and arguably also chests because like yes thieves and chest keys can't open that but like he gets them for free and sometimes uh you don't deploy a thief or a chest key user because like marth can just spend his time opening the the chests um mm -hmm. And I think he gets, it's like, it's a yeah. less, uh, strong argument for the chests. Um, maybe he gets, like, partial thief credit for the chests. Uh, but for villages, he's the only one who can get them. Uh, and there's some good stuff in the villages. Um, the recruitment gets sketchier because, like, oftentimes you don't give credit for units getting recruited. Um, mm -hmm. but I do think that, like, any items that you get from villages, whether it's, like, I think there's a couple of stat boosters in villages. Uh, there's the Thoron village. Um, there's some good stuff. Like, even if you don't give credit for George, like, you don't get the Parthia without going to George's village. Um, yeah. And in that grounds, I do think that... Uh, I don't know that it moves him up, because, again, that's some utility, right? Uh, and we, yeah. you mentioned, like, the Rapier as, like, a discount wing spear. Uh, and it is very deeply discounted, but, again, like, some utility. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like... Ultimately, I think he's fine where he's at. Uh, you do make some good points with that utility, and because I'm thinking, and I'm like, every time I'm playing, even when I don't have a trained Marth that's fighting, I'm still moving him around and doing things on most maps with him, mm -hmm. which is more than I can say about, like, Roy. But then again, am I mostly doing that just because rescue doesn't exist? I don't know. Uh, hard, hard to say, because Roy... If Roy was in a game where, where rescue didn't exist, you'd be moving him around the map, doing a lot of different stuff, but that wouldn't necessarily be the same utility, I guess. I mean, I um, think Roy is think... a slept-on unit, but that's a conversation for another time. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, he's fine where he's at. I think if his speed was a little better, I might push harder to move him down, mm -hmm. uh, because if he manages to level up a couple points of speed, and the fact that he needs a couple points and not just like one or two is, is the problem here. But if he had that couple points of speed so he wouldn't get doubled by Gazak or Hyman or whoever else, those brigand bosses, mm -hmm. then he would be a lot, lot better in the early game. And then t to the point where you would want to level him up and feed him some experience in that early game, that I think would snowball him more and put him into that outclass but still fine level, even if he falls off in, in the late game. And even if I his mid, mid game wasn't good, like even if his mid game wasn't good, right? But he gets those two points of speed, existing and being functional for the first three chapters is a very big deal in 11. Like I maintain that uh, Doga and, uh, not Walt, what's his name? Doga, Gordon, um, Kane and Abel, uh, and Sita and Jagan are, like, amongst the, like, they're, I mean, Sita and Jagan are 
better as a but Kane, Abel, Doga, and uh, Gordon are very good purely for existing in the prologue. Like Kane and Abel do have some yeah. other stuff that they can do, but I think they end up in the the upper echelons. Not like fucking S tier or whatever, but existing in the first three chapters is a very big deal. Um, especially yeah. chapter one. Like chapter one, existing in chapter one is such a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. and like Mar Marth does one. exist in chapter one. And if you were even better in chapter one, like the two points of speed or whatever, like that's that's a huge that's huge. Yeah, exactly. It's like the difference between uh, Marth and two points of speed is like the difference between Ogma and Navar or any one other units in mm -hmm. chapter three. Yeah. Where Ogma is the only unit that doesn't get doubled by the boss at base. Mm -hmm. Um but he still faces crit against the boss. Mm -hmm. What if Marth was fast enough to not get doubled by the boss? He wouldn't face crit from that boss. He'd just be and better so at it then. Like, yeah. Exactly. And so it's like, it's 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 that fine edge that you just find you're just not quite good enough. That I think is where Marth struggles, and I think he gets talked down too much because of just missing that one or two points. Though I will say, missing that one or two points is still that deal breaker that does keep him down. It is damning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it is definitely damning. <sighs> That's it's. I it's hate so talking tragic. about units like that because it is like just one little thing, but you're so close. Mm -hmm. Um, example. I mean, this is why DS Fire Emblem is often called like Stat Emblem or Math Emblem. Yeah. 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 Or Warp Emblem. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we can move Marth, but I just wanted to talk a little bit more about it because I just see him get done dirty so often. Okay, I, I'm, gl I'm glad I got you. Definitely shifted my opinion on him. Again, like these tiers are not ordered. If they were, he'd probably move within the tier, just because you know between the the thief stuff and uh, the early game. Early game is a big deal, and I think people often don't give enough credit for things that you do while you exist in the early game. Um, and in that, on that topic, there's a pair of units that I want to talk about together, not necessarily because they're moving the same amount, um, mm -hmm. but they both, they're related to the early game, and they both have very, very similar uh, things that make me feel that we were perhaps, like, too harsh on them, whether they move or not. Um, I think that they are both worth revisiting for similar reasons, and that is Wolt and Virion. Um, because they do have that early game, but they both share... A really unique set of attributes in that they're both archers, which is normally a pretty dog shit class. Uh, they're both stat wise not all that impressive, and they're both available starting from chapter one in a game where the enemies are incredibly tough. It is nearly impossible to one round enemies unless you are using the Jagan with their silver weapon. And it is very difficult to survive two rounds of combat where you're getting hit by enemies. But they both are able to attack from two range and therefore set up kills for other units, whether that's project or just, I need to fucking kill this enemy or I'm dead uh, and I can't t afford to take a counter. And they end up being useful for that reason. Like Every time I play through FE6, I get a little bit higher on Volt. And every time I play through Awakening, I get a lot higher on Virion. Uh, because everything about, like, it, it applies to Walt to an extent. It applies to Virion in fucking spades. And he's not the only unit who can attack from two range accurately. Because, like, Robin exists with the Thunder Tome and Muriel exists with the Fire Tome. Um, but you need all three of those things. <laughs> um, whereas, like, with Walt... He's really the only, like, you're using hand axes and javelins on, like, the axe bros, um, and, and the Christmas calves, and, yeah, and missing. Yeah, I love that hit rate, yeah. Um, I do think that because of, like, Walt's contributions for five chapters, right? Uh, and Virion's mm -hmm. contributions for, like, four chapters, I feel like they probably both need to move. Probably not to the same degree. Um, I do think Walt is the best archer, like, the best early game bow user, I know people love Dorothy and Sue, um, but I think people, when looking at early game bow users in FE6, overstate how good it is to have bows against the Chapter 7 Wyverns, because, like, you're not one-shotting them, and you're facing bad hit rates usually, like, 60-70% no, no. chance to deal half to two-thirds of an HP. Granted, 
that is better than a lot of other units, but like Rutger mm. and Deke and Marcus and Zelot will do better than that. And yeah, I don't know. Um, I think that I much more value Volt doing some chip in the early game than, uh, you know, Dorothy being slightly better statted against the Wyverns. It's like one point of strength, too. Yeah. I, I think my, you know, answer comes in the form of a meme a little bit of like, it's a thankless job, but someone's got to do it. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's like, because Virion gets very little credit for what he does because he's pretty much never getting the kill. Yeah, and, and same with Waltz. Same Walt. thing with Walt. It, it's... It, 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 they are the chip damage that's reliable. They're reliably able to deal five points of damage, let's say. Five points! But, yeah, five points. But those five points are the difference between, you know, Lance or Alan or Robin or someone mm -hmm. being able to get the kill and not. So, you know. Another thing... It, where do you put a unit like that? I mean, I kind of want to move Walt to old cl outclass but fine TBH. Um, partially because it'll, you know, it'll upset some people who are Walt haters, but also because I think that's where he belongs. Like, I do think that a yeah. unit who contributes in, like, the seven hardest maps in the game, um, because he will contribute in seven if you deploy him instead of Dorothy. Um, I think a unit who contributes in some of the hardest maps of the game, uh, and contributes in a way that, like, is invisible but impactful, both in terms of, like, if you're if you are not setting up for training projects, like he's still contributing because you need to kill people, and if you want to train one of your cavaliers or Shanna or something, like him being able to set up for them is a huge boon. Um, like the fact that he's not dealing a lot of damage can sometimes be beneficial because like it, you don't actually want him to get kills. Like I'm currently co-hosting a yeah. playthrough with Jacob, um, where our Walt is like the highest level unit in our army and he's so statistically bad and he's blessed like he's the highest level unit in our army he has the worst stats of the units in our army and he is above average in everything um so you don't actually want him to get kills you, you the fact that his base stats suck is actually a benefit because he's less likely to accidentally steal kills and more likely to set them up for like alan lance and shanna <laughs> which is so funny I mean, you have the exact opposite problem with a unit like Shannon, who's, mm -hmm. you know, he won't kill the enemy, but then gets a random crit because he has, like, sniper crit. And, and but, but yeah, it's, it's like, I'm looking at the rest of the units in the tier, and I'm like, Walt just kind of doesn't feel like he really belongs. It's like he kind of does, but kind of doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it's like... But I don't want to definitely move him down, so he's definitely, if he's moving, he's moving up a little bit. Because it's like, again, he, he just kind of does that archer job, which often often maligned, often hated on, and often gets replaced by people who love using Sue. Uh, I love using Sue. Shin. Like, it's me. I replace yeah, same. him. Um, same. Me too. And But it's like, what Sue got that he doesn't? Uh, skill and speed, I guess. <laughs> it's not even that. It's a horse, I think, honestly. <laughs> For the most part, it, it really is. It, it's the horse and then a little bit of skill and speed. And also, like, it's... cute girl favoritism, at least for me. Like, I like her. <laughs> She's, I like there's her. There's definitely elements of that, too, yeah. Um, I kind of want to yeah, put it's... Walt in outclass, but fine. He feels that way. Yeah, he's definitely outclassed. Like, mm -hmm. no doubt in anyone's mind, Walt is outclassed. But he's also in a game that habitually outclasses most of your early game units. Mm -hmm. And that's still generally accepted that most of your early game units are still very important and considered good, at least for where they are. And now with Virion, I know this is going to upset some people. Like, I, abs I know it's going to upset some people because I got a lot of comments about, like, this unit you included is actually good. This unit you included is actually great. Like, how is this person even on the list? Um, and I, I don't think I'm going to be moving anyone other than him into not actually bad. So just risk spoiling the video. Uh, I genuinely don't think he's a bad unit. Like, the more I play Awakening, every single time I play, I'm like, oh god, he's actually fucking phenomenal. Um, again, like, even if you don't train him up, the the hardest part of Awakening is in the early game. Uh, yeah, and he's, he's it, his four. biggest contributions yeah. is in the early game. Uh, it's also worth noting that, like, 
Bow Knight is actually a good class in Awakening. Uh, and he can just get it with Master Seal. If you have decided, like, if you do decide, hey, you know, generally Awakening, you pick, like, two or three random scrunklies and be like, I'm gonna invest in you this time. Uh, and yeah, if you decide really he's one of them... Or something. Uh, so it's got, like, Rally skill. It's got very good pair-up bonuses as well. It uh. gives plus move and skill and I think something else. It might be speed. It might not. Um, but it's got very good pair-up bonuses. Like, I remember um, my 0%, I needed a pair-up bot for Shursh because she was my hard carry. And I made Gregor into a Bow Knight and gave them a marriage. Um, and that gave her everything she needed. So I think it's skill, speed, and movement. Uh, it's definitely move because it's a promoted mounted unit. Mm -hmm. um, but also just like rally skill, obviously good. Uh, so the the access to both swords and bows um, means that both uh, Pavais and Aegis you can play around. Because one of them gets hit by Aegis and one of them gets hit by Pavais. Which, if you're doing Lunatic Plus, uh, I guess is beneficial because, like, an enemy might randomly have one or the other. Uh, I don't think that's what pushes him over. Like, I I want to maintain the reason I don't think he's bad is the early game. Like, he's not- he doesn't stand out from other growth units in Awakening. Um, it's just that most of the units in Awakening are actually pretty bad. And very samey. And he has something he offers that, like, he can truly say is unique, right? He can attack from two yeah. range without counter in the chapters where that's, like, most important. Because no one other than Frederick is surviving, like, multiple rounds of combat. Mm -hmm. oh, no. uh, and you have Lissa as your only he Like, your only source of healing is Lissa yeah. and a three-use vulnerary. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's a fort in Chapter 1. And there's some forts in Chapter 2, but you're not reaching them before, like, halfway through the map. Um, so, like, you have no healing. So, taking a counter isn't just like a, oh, your staffer has to take their turn off to heal. You have one vulnerary, and you have Lissa. Um, like, you have almost no healing. This is almost as bad as Chapter 1 of FE11, with, like, please, let's get to the Wrist Village, but without forts to heal on. Um, mm -hmm. it's tragic. I, I keep forgetting that the chapter he joins on is Chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Because the way that Awakening does their chapters at mm -hmm. the early game just makes it feel like it should be like chapter three or something. So Premonition no, is what... Chapter one. Yeah, we got Premonition, which is like the cu playable cutscene. And then there's Prologue, which is one of the more like frustrating prologues. Probably the most frustrating prologue in the series. Yeah, because um, I keep thinking there's a map between that and Virion's map. But there's not. No, there's a long cutscene. Like, that's where you meet Lucina, I mean Marth, um, for the first time in the cutscene. And then there's a forest fire, and they eat a bear, and then the map happens. He shows up yeah. partway through Chapter 1, but by partway through, I think it's like one or two turns in. Um, yeah, I, I like him. I like him a yeah, lot. there's just so much story stuff that happens that it pushes the map back. But yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't have great thoughts and feelings about Virion, but then again, I've also only played Awakening like twice. Mm -hmm. And you're right, the majority of units in Awakening are just kind of samey growth units that it's like, pick whichever ones and they'll probably turn out okay-ish if you manage to get them to survive. And you know what? Like I said, it's a thankless job, but someone's got to do it. Someone's got to be the scrub that stays behind so someone else can get the kill. It's funny, he's like one of only two units that no one in the comments is defending. And I think he's the one who we underrated the most. Um, like, every, everyone on this list, except for, like, Sophia, probably. Um, even There's even Bantu defenders out there, um, which is funny. But everybody on this list has someone defending them, except for Virion. And I genuinely think that was the biggest missed on this list. I, I genuinely think Virion was the unit who we most underrated. Um, and part of that, I imagine, is just because, like... Awakening meta, I feel like, has not been delved super deep into, uh, because a lot of people don't enjoy playing it, um, and I, I would put myself in the camp of I don't enjoy playing it, right? Um, I'll, I'll sometimes, every now and then, I'll get, like, a whim to play Awakening, and oftentimes I drop it, like, three quarters of the way through the game, um, because it just ends up boring me, but that's also yeah. after Varian's usefulness has run out, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. 
But I think part of the reason why people don't defend him is that he do the the meta isn't really like been delved into. There's a few like high level awakening players out there. I have a friend who just he pumps out lunatic runs over and over and over. Um is this the person that did the like the does like the lunatic solo runs? Oh, no, this isn't a content creator. This is just someone oh, I know. Okay. Um okay. like he just plays them on his like hardware. Um I will say there's something about awakening fans that they just don't become content creators. Like there are so many people who love awakening so much and have played it so much and none of them are making content on Awakening because none of them actually want to make content, which, fair. But it, it just, it's just so interesting to me. I've seen some Awakening content. I, I think there's Awakening content creators out there. Like, I've seen some it solo exists. runs. I've seen a lot of character-based content, um, which I think is cool. Like, I'm a big fan of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think that it's a game that pushes away from content creation. Um, I think well, that perhaps, like, the high high difficulty of lunatic and lunatic plus discourages people from like delving into it on the highest difficulties and that might be why the meta is less developed because there's like fewer people into it um especially because yeah. like it's on a similar level to 12 but 12 has that sort of like niche of like pure fire emblem math right and so it attracts a lot of people who are really into optimizing really into ai manipulation really into a lot of the traits that 12 uh, emphasizes and then if you want to optimize skills conquest is right there so awakening sort of stuck in this middle ground where like the people who are turned off by skills and want the pure math go to 12 and the people who really like delving into interesting builds go to conquest and awakening is just sort of like yeah the discarded middle child um it got left behind because other games did what it does in more focused mm -hmm. ways. Not even necessarily better, because I do think there are some charming strengths to what Awakening does. Um, it doesn't fully, like, scratch my itch, but I do have several friends who enjoy it. Like, I've got, you know, I mentioned the one who does, like, hardcore runs, um, but I've also got a friend who does, like, more casual runs, because she just really likes the characters, and she likes pairing people up together. Um, and that's its own sort of, like, fun uh, it doesn't need to be hyper-optimized meta. Like, you can just be like, hey, I like this person. I want them to marry this person. Um, yeah. And so, that was a bit of an aside about Awakening in general. Hopefully, all of the people who are fans of, like, XYZ character we haven't moved uh, aren't going to get too mad that Virion gets <laughs> treated better than. But I do genuinely think that he was the biggest miss on the previous tier list. Um, if, if I'm embarrassed about just one, like I'm definitely embarrassed about Vika, especially since you like pushed back against me and I refused to see the truth. Uh, but Virion is the one who I think was the most egregious uh, and probably the most embarrassing on its own. Um, do you want to enlighten me to someone else? Since I mentioned Vika, would you like to spread any more enlightenment about mistakes that I've made. So, I'm tempted to restore some semblance of order in the, uh, in the tier list by moving Lara Shell down to fun meme. Go on. So, I'm not, like, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think because I know that I'm trying to remember what it was about Lara Shell that made me be like more like defending Lara Shell. Was I defending Lara Shell? I feel like I was. I don't know. It's it's like I'm trying to sort my thoughts out, and apparently my brain is unable to form sentences right now. Um, I think Lara Shell is not really a particularly useful unit. Now that the more I've played Sacred Stones, the more I'm like, yeah, no, there's not really that much use for you. It doesn't mean that you're bad or useless entirely, but it definitely is. It definitely is the point of if you're using Lara Shell, you are pretty much just using her for the memes. And because I don't really see much. Like. Her recruiting Renok for free, and then her being a slightly more mobile staffer, um, 
is not undeserved utility, and I think that's probably why she's in the tier she's in. I'm gonna... Uh, but... I'm trying to rack my brain and think of, like, okay, outside of Chapter 14, do I really care about Lara Shell on most runs? Um, like, if she's not my project, do I care about using her outside of Chapter 14? And I think the answer ends up being no. I would like, say that even on Chapter time. 14, she's pretty bad. Uh, and the reason for that is her base staff rank is D, which is 40 yeah, uses restore. away from Restore, which is a big deal if you're a staffer on 14. Um, mm -hmm. But not only that, she can't use Barrier. Uh, and while Barrier is not super useful in and of itself, it is a great way to grind an underleveled staffer, either to grind their staff rank or to grind their experience. And she is an underleveled staffer. Uh, she demands grinding and then says, oh, but with mend. The yeah, extra also... tragic part is she can't even use torch because she joins, regardless of I which route, she that. joins on the fog of war map. But at the end of it, like whether it's actually over and she joins because she was green or because you just took a long time to get to her, mm -hmm. she, I guess, could maybe cast torch twice or whatever. But like... <laughs> Then there's no more fog. Like, for the rest of the game, until, like, the the defend map. And, like, at that point, you're not training her using Torch. <laughs> Unless you're going out of your way to find skirmishes that are foggy to use Torch on. Which, mm -hmm. what are you doing if that... Like, if you're doing that, you're obviously investing in her because she's your fun meme. Yes. I think that you could easily make the argument that she ends up in worst of the worst. Which for a GBA mounted unit is damning. Um, but she has less movement than Cavaliers as well, which is tragic. Um, yeah, six move, horse. Sea Stabs is... Sea Stabs is really what... Really what breaks it. Sea Stabs is really tragic. Yeah, D Stabs instead of C. Or yeah, D Stabs instead of C. Sea Stabs would have fixed yeah. it. Sea Stabs would have... Like, mm -hmm. even... I'm, all, I'm correcting it in my head because it's so unreasonable... For her, like, La Rochelle and Marissa, I feel like, are signs that they really wanted you to just fucking Volney grind. Yeah. And it's, it's tragic. It really is. And it's, and I think I've been defending La Rochelle for so long, just because, fun unit. But now that I've started doing all sorts of videos on my channel about, like, Hey, let's let's talk about the units we actually use. Let's talk about breaking the meta. Let's talk about fighting against efficiency. I am coming back around a little bit. Not saying that I'm gonna you know delve straight into efficiency, but I'm like, okay, I've gotten that out of my system. Now when we talk about efficiency, I can be more of a clear mind and be like, yes, this unit is actually terrible for these reasons specifically. It breaks my heart because I did a whole video on her. Um about, like, La Rochelle as a character uh, that I really liked, and I like her as a character, so it breaks my heart to have to, like, say that she's even worse than our initial estimation, but she really is. Uh, yeah. She really is. Top, you know, top, one of the best characters in Sacred Stones in my heart, but character-wise, not necessarily unit-wise. Speaking of someone who I like as a character, uh, who I was harsh on as a unit, I did want to revisit Linden. Um, Linden is one of the funnier support, like, in my opinion, he has some of the funnier supports in Engage. Uh, a game that is already, like, halfway just a comedy game anyway. Uh, and I would argue fully a comedy game, but only halfway intentional. Um, <laughs> but I guess that's a different topic. Um, yeah. so I think we were unnecessarily harsh to Linden. Uh, I mentioned the fact that, like, he has, uh, staff, like, access in Griffin, B staffs in Griffin as warp. Um... And that that's, like, cool, but you have other b rank staffers, right? Like, you've got Ivy, you've got Pondreo, and you've got uh, Hortensia as other b rank flying staffers. Um, and that is true. However, I would say that, like, just because you have others doesn't mean that he's worthless. Especially because, like, one, if you're really hyper-pushing and want multiple flyers, like, you've got four options at that point. You do have Mavier much later. Um, but, like, there are maps in between when Linden and Mavier shows up. So it's kind of like saying, like, oh, why would you use Zealot when Percival exists? When it's like, um, well, because there's portions of the game where Percival doesn't. <laughs> um, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that was probably, like, a little bit of a unfair thing to him. 
but also because like, yes, there are technically three other options for flying B-rank staffer, um, but one of those options is Ivy, who you almost certainly don't want to be staffing, because she's probably the best combat unit in the game. Um, and then the other option is Pandreo, who, like, is also very good at combat. And then, like, the third one's Hortensia, who you probably do want staffing. Um, yeah. but, like, you want more than one staffer in this game. Staffs are very powerful in Engage. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you want more than one flying staffer, if possible. Um... So I think that that alone is enough to push him into, like... He might be not actually bad, actually, now that I think about it. Like, are we moving him also up to not actually bad? What do you think? I don't know. It, it's... So, Engage is a little bit weird when it comes to ranking units in general. And I know we're not just talking about Engage, but I mean, it's an Engage unit, so you have to talk to him in, within its own context. Definitely. And so it's like... We put him in fun meme tier mostly because it's the whole on the surface. He has funny crit builds that are more unique to him than other units, even if other units still have... Like, there are other units that do better or easier or less restricted uh, crit builds. I think um, uh, Panette is one, I think. Even yeah. though Panette has a number of other builds that she can do as well. But I think the... Uh, the staffer utility, especially that, you said that making him a flying staff bot, is that because he gets, like, that free extra, like, plus staff rank? So, Linden has, because every unit in Engage has a specific yeah. weapon they're proficient in, and Linden has staffs. Uh, so that means that rather than having C rank staffs as a griffin, he has B rank staffs, uh, which means it gives him access to, in particular, the movement staffs, warp, rescue, and rewarp. Uh, on a six-move flyer. That's very big, because uh, I know that there are so many times when I wanted to have, you know, a movement staff or you know, some other utility staff on my flyers, and I couldn't because they just don't have the rank for that. And so I think that alone definitely puts them at least into greatly outclass some utility, but because this is Engage, and it's a game where well, kind of what emblem you give to a unit determines a lot more about their general utility. Having someone who can just pop over and be a staff bot without having to take up Micaiah and still be flying and mobile and do all this other stuff, it's like, yeah, you're not Hortensia, but mostly Hortensia is using B in lower stage. She's not always spamming Fortify, you know? And so that kind of puts, puts him on a very similar level. He just doesn't have uh, have, have her skills. I would say so that, I, like, being a flying staffer, like, it, he's one of only four, un well, five units who can do it, but four at the time he joins. Um, and two of them might not want to be that, unless you're, like, hyped or optimized, in which case you do want all four. Uh, so that's, you know, it's like saying that, like, oh, so-and-so is, like, you know, only your third wyvern rider, but you probably use all three wyverns, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. And, and so it's, like, and the fact that all he needs is a second seal, and that's at a point in the game when second seals are starting to really become available. Mm -hmm. It's not like Jean, who wants a second seal... Seven chapter chapters eight. before they're available. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's not like he's fighting for your very first second seal when you have three units that want it. He's wanting a second seal at a time when, sure, you can have it. And you don't... You're not... Uh, backlogged by emblems, you're not backlogged by other things, you can give him whatever proficiencies he needs, just some SP and a seal. And I think because of that, it's like, sure, you can't give him, you know, points for the chapters he's not in, obviously, but I think because of that, that's definitely... definitely in either not actually bad or outclass, but still fine. I think I think he's not actually bad. I think I you're overcorrected gonna, the... You're gonna renege on your statement of Virion's the only person we're putting in not actually bad so soon? Uh, I guess I'm saying that he's not actually a person, he's just a staff. Because <laughs> it really, like, that is the thing that he offers you. Yeah. Um, he doesn't really offer you anything else. Like, yeah, I guess his combat's, like, not terrible, but it's not great. And you've got people with great combat. 
Um, Engage in a nutshell is just, he, it's, it's not a unit, it's a staff. <laughs> I mean, on that topic, do we want to talk about it's not a unit, it's a ring? Because that's sort of how I feel about Bune. <laughs> Sure, let's do it. Let's go for it, because I remember when we first made this tier list, uh, Engage was still relatively fresh, and Bune was like, people, pardon the pun, people were still cooking on Bune. I still think that Bune is likely the worst unit in this game, uh, just because like the people who have worse combat than him show up much later, and at least have like something that's sort of like the draw to them. Like, Jean starts in a uh, chain guard class, right? Uh, and he can have... He's one of the only people who can be uh, Chi Adept before you get Byleth. Uh, and that's valuable for some ring stuff. Like, in particular, Lucina Chi Adept. Um, Anna, like, I'm pretty low on Anna, but you can, like, meme around with her to get the money stuff. And I don't think it's worth training her. But at the very least, like, it is something she offers, whereas, like, he's just sort of really middling um, when yeah, he shows up. at the very least, is very fun to, to use, to train. She's a fun training project, even if she's not the ideal one. Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry. And, like, with Bune, I did get people pointing out that, like, you know, his stats are... I mean, I would say they're still pretty terrible for the time, but they're, like, you can do some things, and you can slap a ring on him, um... And, like, by virtue of that, he probably shouldn't be in Worst of the Worst. But, I don't know. It feels to me, like... And this is kind of why I hate talking about most engaged units. Is... Yeah. A lot of units, like... So, the existence of infinite reclassing, or functionally infinite reclassing, means that, like, units end up mostly being a ball of personal stats, at least by the mid-game. Mm -hmm. uh, and the existence of rings means that oftentimes people give units credit for what is being done by the ring, even if the thing that could be done by the ring, it, like, could be done on someone else, right? And I tend to think that that's the, the Bunei defense, is, yes, he leverages these rings, but not in a way that is unique at all, and you're really just oh. getting utility out of the ring. Like, there's definitely some characters who leverage the rings in unique ways. Um... For example, like, if you throw uh, Sigurd on Vonder early on, like, he can move really far because of the extra Cavalier bonuses, and only Alfred shares that with him. And, like, Alfred can do some other stuff with Sigurd, potentially, as well, but Vander tends to overall have better bulk, so, like, the overextending thing. Um, or, like, if you throw uh, Marth on someone to get Mercurius, and they are a good investment project for that, uh, oftentimes it's Aaliyah because Aaliyah is stuck with Marth, so raises the bond level naturally anyway for a few chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, but Chloe is another one people like to point to with that. Uh, there are a few units who, like, uniquely use these rings. You know, um, uh, Zelkov with Byleth in order to get the Dex Dance in a unit who can actually do, like, in a covert unit, um, is pretty cool. Uh, because yeah. he has decent combat as a covert unit uh, at that time, which no one else really offers at that time. Uh, in Covert. Like, you know, other people obviously offer decent combat, but if you really want Covert Dance, uh, which is valuable, because uh, I think that's the plus speed one, um, then he's kind of your only option if you're not, like, deploying an archer who's not great. Uh, let's not fucking get into that debate, okay? But, <laughs> uh, so Thank you. there are some people who, like, do uniquely leverage the ranks, and I think they get credit for them, but... Bune just doesn't strike me as someone who uniquely leverages the rings because, like, he yeah. doesn't have super good covert performance, which is the rare one. Like, being a good covert unit is rare. You've either trained one of the archers, uh, trained Yunaka, who is going to have lower experience growth because of the way that thief stuff... Or not lower experience growth, but she can't promote, so it, like, thief stuff is weird for her. Or you've u using Zelkov. And, like, if you haven't trained the archers, it's kind of Zelkov over Yunaka just because mm -hmm. of base stat stuff. Level 17 versus level, like, 7 or whatever. But, like, you can have other people in mounted classes, right? Like, you can, if you want a cavalry ring bonus, you can very easily reclass someone into cavalry uh, and still have them function just off their personal stats in the cavalry paces. Whereas, like, reclassing someone into a covert tends to drop them because of the way the thief bases work or locked them to bows, which is often unideal for those units. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Engage is either okay. You do you have do you have a personal class? Well, you know you're not a royal, so you don't have that. Do you have a really notable personal skill? No, he can sometimes eat food twice. Um, do you have really notable personal bases that are either very, generally high or like high in a specific way? Well, no, he's pretty kind of generic and mediocre. Uh, well, do you have like a unique weapon access? Stuff like, you know, uh, Linden's uh, staves, uh, sta staff plus. No, I think he has axes or something as his better weapon. Axes sounds right. Axes sounds I, right. The fact that I don't know, I think tells you <laughs> everything you need to know, right? Yeah. And, and and so it's one of those things of like, is he really like an unusable unit? No. Is he? And, and so it's like by nature of the tier list, does he belong in Worst of the Worst? I don't necessarily know, but... I don't necessarily think he belongs any any better either because he's not you're right it's not him doing anything it's your chosen investment it's the ring the weapon the SP books and the skills that you're giving him that's doing all the work he's just the body you've chosen to give all that to and in comparison to Flora who is someone who we did move out of worst of the worst on the grounds of like she can contribute using these stabs and stuff. Like, she has the unique attribute of, like, she actually uses stabs, which yeah. not everyone can, and a lot of people don't want to be in classes that can. Uh, I, I'd say most people don't want to be in classes that can. Um, even if you could reclass, they're not, they're going to have E rank stabs. Yeah. Fate. Whereas, like, Bune, literally anyone can use those rings. And if, if the thing that you really want out of them is Cavalier bonus, like, send someone else into Great Knight or Paladin, um, or Bow Knight. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we, we talked about how hard it is to get units into Covert and to like them in Covert, so you have to give them Dagger or Bow mm -hmm. and very few classes. To get someone into Paladin, you just have to have that one weapon skill. Just any melee weapon skill and they can be a Paladin if they're already promoted. And I think it, it, most people don't even want to be Paladin. Like, it's a bad class. Yeah. But, like, if Bune was offering you something unique from the rings, it would be from class bonuses. Because, mm -hmm. like, his personal skill interacts with one of Celica's abilities, who is a ring you don't have at that time. And it's also no. not a good combo. I'm really sorry, Bune fans. Like, I tried. I examined this unit up, down, left, right, center. I even, like, replayed up until uh, partway through Solm a new file just so I could use him and see, like, can I please squeeze something out of him? And just, no, no, I can't. I mean, like, I can, but it's not him. It's the rings. Mm -hmm. Or Definitely. the forges. Like, you give him the forges, too, but you can give that forge to someone else, right? Like, yeah. there are a lot of tools that you can stick on him that you can also stick on someone else. Yeah, joining a chapter after renowned units like Kagetsu and whatnot is not... He'd, great for him either. He joins alongside Fogato and Pandreo, and yes. right after Ivy, Kagetsu, and Zelkov. Um, and right before... Uh, Panette and Marin. Yeah. It, it, he just... He's such a mediocre unit joining in the middle of a flood of other units. Like, I could even see giving him more attention and more use if he was somehow the only unit that joined in a map. Mm -hmm. But... The way that Engage works is you have, like, I think the only unit who's the only unit that joins in a map is, like, Seedal. He has uh, what I would describe as the FE7 filler unit problem, too, in that he joins when there's no deployment slots for filler units. Um, yeah. Like, you're probably already choosing between your projects and pre-promotes at this time, so, like, there's no way that he's edging out someone, right? Uh, you're you're probably no, dropping no, units no. you've grown attached to because you look at Pandreo's stats and you look at Ivy's stats and you look at Kagetsu's stats and you look at Zelkov's stats and you look and you at Fagato's stats four, and you look at the literal four deployment <laughs> slots you have uh, because you're you're like well I'm getting four new units in this chapter I have to bring Alir and I probably should bring Hortensia so um, three units it is. But yeah, one of the things that people did point out is, like, 
a 10-1 uh, Louis and Chloe, or not Louis and Chloe, Loe and uh, Jade, the two armor knights, like if you make them great knight, they're just strictly worse than him, which is true, but they're around during times when like I actually care about, well, Louis is around during times that I actually care about like yeah. what he's doing. Uh, Jade kind of isn't. Um, <laughs> but for Bunei, like, yes, he strictly outclasses the units that I'm probably already benching, but not by enough that he's the reason I'm benching them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, great, you're better than an internal level 11 unit. Congratulations, you were in chapter 12. It's tragic. Um, do you have someone you want to tackle? I know I just did two in a row by accident. Uh, no worries. I... I don't actually have anyone else on this list that I'm kicking to talk about. We can so, uh, jump to another engage unit then. Inspires me. Yeah, let, let's let's keep going down your list. So Lapis is the unit that I've gotten probably the most comments about out of anyone in the entire list right here, uh, and Everyone they are almost all negative. They're almost all. You put Lapis way too low. You're underrating Lapis. Let me tell you my Lapis build. Um, much of what I say about Bunei applies to Lapis. Uh, you'll notice there's a huge tier gap between them. So, like, she is infinitely more salvageable than him. Um, but in many cases, the way in which you make Lapis, quote-unquote, work uh, is by investing resources in her that anyone else could use uh, to equal or greater effect. Um... Yeah. She joins alongside Alchrist and Citrine, um, and then shortly after, she uh, gets joined by Diamante and um, Amber. And at that point, you have, I think, three total second seals? Uh, no, two total second seals, three total master seals, or... <laughs> you have a limited number of second seals and master seals that units are fighting over. Um, yeah. You have other options to give those seals to. Uh, you also have other options to give the rings to, because she does kind of want a ring. Uh, most units want rings, though. Mm -hmm. I would say that, like, in particular, uh, Citrine definitely outclasses her, and Amber definitely outclasses her. Um, Diamante and Lapis are kind of the same unit, because uh, they both really want to reclass into uh, Wyvern Knight, right? That is generally considered to be the best build for them. I know some people like doing uh, Mage Knight with Lapis, um, and Diamante can make that work just as well, because their stats, their personal stats, are actually remarkably fucking similar. Um, Lapis has one point of personal strength over Diamante, um, really? but in exchange, uh, or other than that, like, their stats are functionally identical. Uh, the speed versus con thing makes it so that their effective AS is the same. Um, their bulk is the same in terms of like their HP and defense and res and stuff. Um, and their growths are basically identical as well. Like Diamante has a little bit more strength growth than Lapis. Lapis has a little bit more speed growth than Diamante, but Diamante, and I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, by the way. Uh, I know I'm upsetting some people. <laughs> Comment below. Um, but Diamante has more con growth as a trade-off for the speed growth thing that again, keeps their speed on pace with each other. Um, and the slightly extra strength growth is not enough to like, make it so that he's significantly stronger than her, especially with that one point of personal speed, uh, strength at base, they end up just being basically the same unit as each other, um, in a way that is, like, it, to me, like, that comparison, and then when someone defends one or the other of them, I tend to ask, like, what do you, like, if someone's, like, a big Diamante fan, right? What do you think of Lapis? Oh, she's trash, horrible, awful, unusable garbage. Or if someone defends Lapis, and I say, what do you think of Diamante? Oh, he's trash, horrible, awful, garbage, unusable. Uh, and to me, it's sort yeah, of reflective. I've heard this before. To me, it's sort of reflective of the fact that, like, a lot of people's experience with these units is colored by who you give good forges, good rings, and good reclasses to. Um, she is extremely usable. But she is outclassed by at least two people around her. Like, I would say Citrine outclasses her, and Amber outclasses her. Um, I'd say Alchrist and Diamant are, like, in the same boat as her. And she outclasses Jade. Um, she's also, like, she's not just competing with them. Like, she is competing with people you've trained since the, the early game as well. But mostly that's Elyr and Chloe. 
Um, and then she's also, like, she's not just competing with them because she is going to compete for mid-game slots uh, with Ivy Crew and with um, uh, Fagato Crew, right? So yeah. she is, like, outclassed but still fine does not mean this, use it, this unit is unusable trash garbage. This unit is just as good as Diamant, and Diamant is also not unusable trash garbage. Um, because they're the same unit. Like, they are so the same unit, even more so than... Because I know people like to debate about the archers, and I'm not interested in engaging with that debate. I will shadow ban you if you bring it up in the comments. Um, <laughs> but she and Diamant are even closer than Alcrest and Etiar to each other, because they join one chapter apart, uh, and they want to go into the same build. Um, so they are, for all intents and purposes, like, differentiated by a chapter of availability, uh, 200 SP, and personal skills. Yeah. And, like, that and is so little to separate units from each other in the grand scheme of things that, like... Again, I'm not saying she's unusable trash garbage. Like, she's very usable. Um, everyone in Engage is very usable, other than you, not you. Um, everyone in Engage is very usable. I just don't think that... Like, outclassed but still fine has the word still fine in it, right? Like, it's fine yeah. to use her. Um, she's extremely usable. Yeah. Engage is one of the... Maybe it is the most prime example of this in Fire Emblem of pick your projects. Mm -hmm. And Lapis is often picked as a project because she's cute. Because she joins relatively early. Because people love sword fighter units. Because, you know, fill in the blank on reasons why. Uh, one of those big reasons is because she got a lot of hate. And so a lot of people wanted to make her work and so they found ways to do it. It's because people are naturally, you know, uh, con contrarian like that. I think Lapis is a totally fine unit. I think that the things that she needs are needed by a lot of other units, and so she won't always get them. And I think that, you know, if you try to half-ass it and only give her some of it, like, oh, you'll give her a second seal, or you'll give her a master seal, but you won't you know, give her the ring that she needs. Well, she's still gonna kind of feel like garbage. You, you give her a ring, but, you know, you don't promote her early because you're using someone else. Well, you're not gonna feel like, you know, it's, 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 it's just that combination of factors of like, if she's not your chosen project, she's not gonna turn out great. But if she is your chosen project, she'll be just fine. And this is the perfect example I mean, not the perfect example, but like another perfect example of why unit discussion and engage just died on the vine so quickly. Yeah, I do think that it's partially because of the way that engage units are, and partially because there was a weird amount of vitriol around engage units. I think part of that comes from the discourse around engage in general being like weirdly aggressive because of how polarizing of a game it is. Um, yeah. And because I think people were probably, like, looking for arguments, and since they couldn't get into political arguments over three houses, they had to get into, like, very aggressive unit arguments. Um, yeah. In a that way that's too. frustrating. Plus, you also got all the people who really loved, I guess, for lack of a better term, the depth and weird niche builds that three houses offered to most of its cast, that it just kind of engaged doesn't really offer in that same way you the thing about engage is you can make really cool niche builds but rather than them being unit specific they are generally just apply to a third or more of the cast um like yeah. in three houses you could be like this unit gets a combination of frozen lance plus lance fair plus um, access to, like, this in terms of their boons and banes, and they are the one who most uniquely leverages these things. But in Engage, everyone gets access to basically everything, um, which is what makes units like Linden having the staff, um, proficiency, or units like Kagetsu having incredibly good personal bases, or, like, even Jean and Fromm being able to be Chi Adepts, and Alir being able to be Chi Adepts early on, like, you have those niches and there can sometimes then be like unique builds for them but for the most part um they end up being very very samey 
I do also, yeah. because Lapis is the unit who makes the most comments about, like, giving X power to people, because uh, there's, like, Axe power, Sword power, Lance power, etc. And now that the well exists, um, you can spend a bunch of SP books to give someone a bunch of power skills. Um, and that is true, but that, again, also applies to every single person that you join- that joins at that time, right? Like, you could give Axe Power to Lapis and superpower her ability to use Forged Axes, but you could also give Axe Power to- Again, Diamond is the best example, uh, because they're the same fucking unit, and superpower his ability to use Axes. Uh, or Amber, and superpower his ability to use Axes. Um, or Jade, if you want to use Jade! Like, I tend to think Jade is worse- is the worst of the Brodians, but, like, if you want to use her, she's also very usable. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. The way I think about uh, engaged units in that sort of aspect is like wedges. Like, here's like the wedge of units that have generally higher speed or higher decks or whatever. Mm -hmm. here, here are this wedge of units who need help in this way. Here's this wedge of units who need help in that way. Here's this wedge of units who have this type of utility. And it means that none of the units are uniquely individual, but that there are clusters of units that can all do similar jobs. They just do them in maybe slightly different ways, or maybe at slightly different times, or with slightly different investments. And that's kind of where Lapis ends up, and that's kind of where, you know, a, a lot of the other engaged units that are not listed here end up. Um, you mentioned a couple of seconds ago the idea of, like, three houses units generally having, like, really cool, unique builds that you put them into. And um, not all of them, but some of them. Yeah, so I wanted to drift into a unit who is on this list mostly because she does not have access to those builds, and we won't be here long. I mostly just wanted to say, because I do get a lot of comments about Mercy still, um, initially she was the most commented person, she probably still is, but Lapis is the most commented one that I haven't talked about yet. Um, Those comments have moved to your other video. Yeah, if you would like to know why I personally believe Mercedes is, is the worst student in Three Houses, um, by a pretty significant margin, uh, and she is also worse than Anna, because Anna's also on her. Anna and Ash are, like, some of the lower tiers that are often compared to her. Uh, I made an entire video that's, like, 50 minutes long, breaking down in exquisite detail, uh, with a lot of testing, like, in-game testing in terms of, like, reaching her ranks and stuff, right? Uh, not even going off of, like, RNG for her stats, but, like, literally, her problems come from her, her ranks and her spells and stuff. Um, if you want more information on the issues that I have with Mercedes, there is a video that will be linked below that is called, like, The Problem with Mercedes, or Was I Wrong About Mercedes, or something like that. I don't remember the exact title, but it goes deep into, uh, why I think that she is the worst student in, uh, Three Houses. And I'll throw Mercedes fans a bone here. Um, at the time of recording that video, I said that I thought she was the worst unit in Three Houses. Um, I now pretty definitively believe Hanuman and probably Manuela are both worse than her. Um, so argue about that if you're a fan of one of those two units. <laughs> uh, can't wait for this video to all- the comments all to be about the two of them. Um, but yeah, I tend to think that they are worse than her. Um, maybe I'll talk about that later, but for now, we can move on from Mercy because I've- I've gone into Mercy a bunch and I don't want to, like, kick her while she's down because I do really like her personality. Um, yeah. R slash they did the math on Mercy. Is there someone your heart draws you to, or should I continue to take the the reins? Uh, take the wheel. I'm just kind of sitting here looking at these units being like, I hope I don't pass out before we get done with this video. <laughs> um, well, speaking of units who might make you pass out through to a long amount of time, Fiona, um, if you're going to use her in the tower, you end up grinding her a bunch and passing out. Um, I think I overemphasized the amount that her, like, mount utility rescue stuff can be useful in part three. Um, I don't know if it moves her to fun meme tier, uh, but I find that she is a lot less useful than I remember her being in terms of, like, doing rescue drop stuff, doing, uh, blocking ledge body stuff. Uh, she can't survive any combat, obviously, but that's not, not something that we, like, ever pretended she could. Um... And, yeah, I don't- do you think that she- her, like, rescue dropping utility, uh, which is very close to non-existent, is low enough that she should be fun meme tier? Cause, like, bring her to the tower's a fun meme. 
So it, it's one of those things of let me go through the Act 3 maps. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Swamp Map where she moves around on your island and I think can't even really move in the swamp. She has like one tile movement. Oh, she has zero movement on the swamp. Oh, she can't even move in the swamp. But people okay. exaggerate how damning that is because anyone who moves into the swamp is dead. Like, yeah, most of your it's... other units can't move into the swamp even though they literally can because they die. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those things of like, it's... It does limit her utility because other units at least can move a tile or two to, like, get in position to, you know, help out with a kill or something. Uh, meanwhile, she can't even do that. She's stuck um, on land. I Which, genuinely I guess... think if she had full movement on the swamp, it wouldn't change how usefully she is on that map. True. Like, I genuinely True. think that people overstate that by a lot. True. Because... Ultimately, what's she gonna do? She's gonna die in one hit to a tiger, or get doubled and die to a cat. Oh, she dies in one um, hit to cats. <laughs> she dies in one hit to cats. <laughs> not even. Doesn't even care about the doubling. Just, oh my goodness. Yeah, and so she's moving around the back lines, trying not to get in the yellow units' way, while while ripping units out of the swamp who got into the swamp in a bad position. Uh, and it's like, okay, you, so you can argue that there's some benefit there to. Having Yuna attack and then being able to rescue them back, and does the fact that she has Savior uniquely help that? No, because she's not doing combat while she's rescuing anyone, but, you know, she can technically do that, because she has a uh, mount that makes it, make it so she can Kanto back to relative safety. Well, Savior's um, not locked to her. True. True. It, it, she, she gets it without points, but it's not locked to her, it just she starts with it. Um, yeah, I would argue that, like, map. you never fill her capacity anyway, because, like, what skills is yeah. she using? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, but I'm also like, who, who else would I give Savior to? Har. Um, I give it to Har. Like, I send it with Ileana. <laughs> Fair. That, that's probably is the, the best use of it. Um, I'm trying to think elsewise. You have the Boulder map, um, which is... She can't go on to any of the ledges so she's just kind of rescuing from the top but then you have pegasus knights who fly around the top and that's kind of dangerous i find um, that on the boulder map i use her to like canto trade or canto take drop down below where she's like were you doing the choke point strats okay okay yeah and that and that does help out somewhat because then you you have the unit who you're not using up one of your you know choke point units actions yeah to trade or to take drop or whatever um so so she has some utility there and then in 313 she can barely move around because of ledges um but again you can still have some utility with like trade drop initially mm -hmm. and i think the best thing she does in 313 is pick up some of the yellow units that get themselves in a bad position and then make it so that way they're not like blocking like like for instance sometimes a yellow unit will be standing at the top of a ledge but you know the first thing they want to do is move away from that ledge or jump down the ledge and then ultimately they open up so more cats can jump up so she can rescue them and then stand on top of that ledge so nothing herself so nothing can come up and so it's like that's the most useful that she ends up being in act three Though... I wish that yellow units in Radiant Dawn functioned like the temporary blue units in Thracia and Three Houses, where you can control them, but they don't gain experience. Yeah, that would have been better, but the technology just wasn't there yet, I guess. I mean, um, Thracia, though! Thracia was before! It has the technology! <laughs> Ta Kaga must have stolen it. It was it was lost ancient technology, like a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> like, in the thousand years that passed, they forgot how to make hovering cities. You Ten thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think she can still be here and greatly outclass some utility, purely because in those Act 3 maps, it is all hands on deck. And I buy uh, that. Like, yeah, she's about as useful as, as you know if you replaced her with just one of those horse units from from the uh, lighting fires map. But you know, have, having a unit who can canto around and rescue stuff is still is still useful when every single move is is starting to get so tight, like it does uh, towards the end of Act Three. 
The last unit who I wanted to talk about was Brady, and Brady is here as a representative of, like, most of Gen 2 of Awakening, uh, and most of the late game Awakening, and honestly, most of the growth units in Awakening. Um, and I do have him on here because I think he's, like, uniquely disappointing of them. I don't even think he's necessarily the worst child unit in Awakening, but I think he's the one that feels the worst. Um, the biggest point that people gave, like, for why Brady is good is he's a Gale Force boy. Um, that being that, like, because his mom can reclass to Pegasus, she can get access to Gale Force and pass it down to him. I think, like, roughly two-thirds of the units in Awakening can access Gale Force in one way or another. Um, yeah. But it is important to remember that Gale Force comes from a level 15 promoted class. Uh, without excessive grinding, that's going to come incredibly late on most units. There are a few units who can get it quickly, like Robin, because of the experience multiplier, and as a result, Morgan uh, can get it fairly quickly. And then Sumia and Cordelia can get them fairly quickly. I yeah, think they that, start in the class. Yeah, they start in the class. I think anyone else reasonably is not going to get Gale Force in like a timely manner, because it's important to remember that they do need to reclass into Pegasus after gaining a bunch of levels in their base class. Uh, so... For example, Lissa needs 35 levels in order to get Gale Force. And so that means that she's 10 levels in Cleric, which is on Staff Experience, which is so bad in Awakening. Like, Staff Experience in Awakening is probably the worst it has ever been. Um, so it's 10 levels in Staff Experience, and then 10 unpromoted levels after that, uh, which are slightly slower than regular unpromoteds. I don't fully know the math, but it is slightly slower but not enough that it's like a huge deal like i still just counted as 10 unpromoteds and then yeah, 15 it's... promoteds um so 35 levels for maribel it's like a similar deal because she's also in staff i don't think it's a full 10 it might be like eight staff levels but it's very very late for her like it's between 30 and 33 levels in order to get gale force who you then pass down to brady and he starts out in a staff class Meaning that if you want him to make use of Gale Force, he needs at least a Master Seal, probably a Second Seal. Um, which just feels bad. Like, I recognize, yeah, you can get Gale Force on him, and you can make any child unit functional. Um, some are harder to than others, and I do think he's one of the harder ones, despite the fact he can act as Gale Force. It's also part of why, like, people will defend Donald as a dad, because Donald can give Pegasus Knight to his kid uh but that's important to remember that you're getting the kids more than halfway through the game mm -hmm. even if you second seal them immediately to peg um then they end up with like they still are 25 levels away and 15 of those are promoted um halfway through the game like i i know that gale force is an incredibly powerful skill it is the strongest skill that has ever existed but because of how difficult it is to attain in a timely manner, I do also think it's one of the most overrated things in any Fire Emblem. Not because when yeah. you have it is bad. Like, I think it is every bit as good as when people uh, when you have it. I just think that, like, you know, it's like saying that, like, Athos is the strongest unit in Fire Emblem 7. Like, from the perspective that you don't care about the number of maps that a unit is around for, sure. Uh, but from, like... You know, if you start up a fresh save Hector Hard Mode, you reach chapter 12 and you say like, Hey, which unit should I use this game? And someone goes, Athos. You're like, okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> like, what unit should I use Next to clear question. chapter 12? Athos. <laughs> Next comment. Yeah, okay, let me just Help. do a reverse recruitment. Then. Um, you know, what? I'm stuck on chapter 7 of Awakening. Have you tried using Gale Force? No the fuck I haven't. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of these comments about Gale Force come either from people on lower difficulties where grinding is a lot easier, or from people who have the DLC where grinding is free, mm -hmm. or just costs money from your credit card, or both, or what have you, XYZ situation. As someone who had the DLC and grinded that way because I decided Lunatic was not worth my time or patience and I just wanted to, like, do it to say that I did it, I used the grinding DLC and I made a Gale Force kid, a Gale Force child squad. 
and it took many hours in the dedicated experience grind DLC because the experience falloff of having to reclass was so bad that I was getting, like, very little experience from the DLC map that is designed to give you as much experience as possible. That's I awful. don't want to imagine how bad it must be to be leveling Olivia or Maribel or what have you that much in regular play, regular maps, without going to grind maps. And it's worth noting that, like, I don't factor grinding in when ranking how good units are, and it's not because I think grinding is some sort of, like, immortal sin or, like, the wrong way to play the game. Like, I've grinded before, uh, either for, like, specific challenge runs. Like, if you watch my Awakening 0%, I ended up, prior to Grimma, having to grind uh, Basilio and Flavia to B support, because they only reach C naturally. Um, and I don't think that makes the run invalid. Like, I was honest about it, because I do think it's important to be honest about it, but... I think that grinding is perfectly fine, whether it's for a challenge run or just because you enjoy that to be fun. Uh, like, if yeah. you enjoy grinding and getting these super out overpowered Gale Force squad and then getting to just say, fuck you, I break the game. Uh, like, your story, you told me a story recently about how you had an overpowered Gale Force squad, but rather than using it aggressively, you used it defensively and you would attack people, get Gale Force, and then flee out of their range. And I think that is incredibly funny and fun and unique and that's a cool story that you would not have gotten yeah. without grinding um Definitely. so don't let anyone like s don't stop grinding just because i'm not counting grinding in evaluation the reason i discount grinding in evaluation is i think it makes units very samey you know you can grind brady up um, to have good stats, you can grind up Mirabel to pass down good skills to him. But in that instance, he is not different from any other unit you've ground up to have other builds. Like, maybe he has slightly different builds available to him, and that, like, the combination of, like, Axe Fair and Gale Force and War Cleric and Stabs and whatever, like, maybe you can be like, okay, well, I'll use... Gale Force to move him and then use Rescue with his second action, right? Um, but he's not functionally different from if you decided to, like, reclass Pawn into Wyvern and Super Pawn or whatever. Or, like, you know, if you just decided to, you know, super loop your Donal and make him, like, the best Arms Thrift Solar, right? Like, yeah. once you unlock sort of Pandora's box of everyone is at whatever level you want... People tend to be very, very samey, unless you're talking specifically about, like, Apotheosis, which I think is a different discussion, and is very interesting. Like, there's someone on my server who frequently talks about uh, the PvP meta of Fates, where everyone is capped, and so things like... Everyone is assumed to be capped and have plus seven forges, so there's a lot of weird, like... Oh yeah, this unit's actually garbage in PvP Fates because of the way that, like, this, 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 and this works when everyone is assumed to be capped. And I think that's really cool. However, that's not the context I'm talking about these units in. Um, mm -hmm. And that's fine. Like, there's there's different contexts to talk about things in. Um, I think that's sort of a good note to close out on because, like, I did make this list to celebrate bad units, not to scold them. Uh, which is why Worst of the Worst <laughs> is the top tier. Because, like, I do like bad units and i think that being the baddest bad unit puts you in the top of the bad unit tier list because like again it's a celebration not a condemnation um yeah. so if anything like if you're mad that varian got moved down uh and your favorite person didn't like i'm insulting varian by saying he's not bad enough to be special now <laughs> um all things even out yeah all things even out bad units are good actually uh, talk about things in context. Uh, don't let anyone else tell you how to play, but also understand that when we talk about uh, certain things that we have math involved or we have sometimes it's just opinions involved, but we would like to believe that we have some sort of level that we're talking in. And just because that level we're talking in or that context we're talking in doesn't line up to the context you normally play in or talk in doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means... We have different opinions, we have different thoughts and feelings on it. And at the end of the day, it's a video game. If you want to go up if you want to get upset over something, there's plenty more stuff to get upset about in the world.
In addition to celebrating bad units, I want to take a moment to celebrate good patrons, specifically my patrons. I appreciate the support of everyone who backs the channel, and I'm going to read out the names of the pre-promotes now, as that is one of the tier incentives. So thank you to Jamie Collins, Marin Karen, Thick Molder, George Grenville the 7th PM, Danielle Kalaskas, Anya, Tailored Muffin, Dr. Majalis, and Herc. If you are interested in supporting the channel, there is a link below to where you can do that. It gives you access to things like polls and sneak peeks. However, please only do so if you are financially capable of doing it without straining yourself. Otherwise, a like and subscribe is also good support. But regardless of what you choose to do, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone.